Glad you could be here. Uh, I'm Joe Esposito. Anybody hear my show? Anybody hear my show? It's what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> I showed a picture one day, one of my patients, she's a 12 year old girl, and I said, These are some of the people you listen to. This is B98, and this is the river, blah, blah, blah. And she looks at me, she goes, You don't have to be good looking to be on radio, do you? <laughs> oh, 12 year old, killing me. <laughs> So anyway, uh, my background, uh, real quick, I have five degrees. I'm board certified in chiropractic, I'm board certified in orthopedics, I'm board certified in pain management, double board certified in nutrition, that's five. BS in clinical nutrition, uh, retired dietitian, award-winning author. Uh, my shows on Sunday morning and Sunday night are now nationally syndicated and Canada's looking to pick it up as well, so you'll be, we'll be officially international real soon. Shaney made that happen, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I've been in practice 32 years, and in 32 years I've missed a half a day of work, and the reason I missed that half a day of work is I hit my head and I was dizzy and the staff sent me home. They didn't want me adjusting patients. <laughs> um, but it, it's a lot of fun to be here, and I'm really excited. I told Pete, you can't fire me. If you do, I'm not going to leave. So. Uh, <laughs> but our goal is to eventually go full-time and, and make this, you know, become more part of the Cox family team because it's, it's just fun. So we're going to talk today about stress management because when Ernie and I, I were talking, what do, we, what do we have here at, at the offices? Stress. Of course. So there's two types of stress I want you to think about. There's chemical and there's physical. Now chemical is food, drugs, alcohol, environmental toxins, hairsprays, colognes, carpet cleaners, mold. These are chemical stresses that when they get into your body adversely affect your health, which then can have you having trouble dealing with the physical or the emotional. Well, there's three types, the emotional stress as well. Physical stress is when the body isn't working at 100%. So it's real simple to make the body work. The way the body works is your brain sits up here, right? Most cases. <laughs> and the brain sends messages down your spine, out your nerves to every cell in the body. So there's a nerve that goes to your arm, that makes your arm move. There's a nerve that goes to your leg, your liver, your spleen, your kidneys, your gallbladder. Everybody's got a nerve going to it. Chemically, what you eat, what you're exposed to can alter the nerve function. And then if we have a pinched nerve, that can physically alter. The, the nerve function, and then when you have emotional stress, or your boss is calling you up, or uh, the cameras go down, or lightning hits the tower, or whatever it is, now you have this emotional stress, and you have the physical stress, and you have the chemical stress, and the body shuts down. You can only handle so much at a time. So the two things that you have control over are the chemical and the physical. We can't change the fact that lightning hit the tower, and suddenly the station went out, and there's dead air, and everyone's losing their mind. But we can deal with the chemical and the physical, and that's what we'll talk about today. Then the other stuff becomes a whole lot easier, okay? So a couple of things, and I appreciate that Kathy put up what I joke around is the seven deadly sins of nutrition. These are the seven foods you want to consider cutting back or cutting out of your diet. Now, when we go through them, you're all going to get mad at me. I'm say, I can't do that. <laughs> that. <laughs> so the seven deadly sins are alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. That's what most people eat, right? <laughs> Every one of those is a major chemical stress on the nervous system. So I'm not asking you to give them all up. Don't worry. I'm going to ask you to make better choices, OK? So we'll start with alcohol. Alcohol destroys what? Brain cells, right? How many people knew that? How many people forgot that? Oh, oh, no. <laughs> huh? <What? laughs> so alcohol destroys your brain cell. Your brain controls everything. Your brain is sending messages down the spine, out the nerves to the body. So if you're drinking alcohol, a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of brain damage. A lot of alcohol, a lot of brain damage. Okay, makes sense? So people say, but I'm not going to give up my beer, my wine, I love that. Okay, here's my deal. I want you to consider this. You ever notice, well, well beer is water, wine is what? It's, an al it's a diuretic, which means it makes you pee, not poop, pee. <laughs> diuretic means pee. Who invited her? No. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so alcohol makes you pee. The reason is alcohol shuts down a chemical in your brain called vasopressin. Vasopressin prevents you from peeing. So right now, all of you are producing vasopressin. It's also called antidiuretic hormone. And it prevents you from peeing all day, and you dehydrate. When you drink alcohol, your body is smart enough to say, the alcohol is going to destroy brain cells. I got to get the alcohol out of the system. So the body stops producing vasopressin, which allows you to pee, to flush the alcohol out of the system so it doesn't cause brain damage. Got it? OK. Did you ever notice how you drink one beer, you pee out three? Yeah. <laughs> Where did those other two beers come from? 
your body is giving up its vital fluids to flush the alcohol out so it doesn't cause brain damage. That's how smart your body is. And then you wake up the next morning dehydrated with a hangover. There you go. So here's my negotiation with you. If you're going to drink alcohol, drink water with it. Problem solved. For every one drink you have, <laughs> she's done this before. Hmm. <laughs> For every one drink you have, three glasses of water. Just that simple. Okay? A couple of things happen. Number one, you pee it all night, so you don't have time to drink. <laughs> Number two, you're saving a ton of money. Yeah. Okay? You're not buying drinks. You say, I don't drink. I haven't had a drink in years. But if I go out to dinner with somebody, if I'm on a date and a girl orders a glass of wine, it's $10, $12, $15. I'm like, I could eat for a week on that. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm vegetarian. I eat cheap. So. <laughs> so I look at it and I go, that's amazing what people are paying to get sick. Blows my mind. So, but some people say that alcohol is good for you. The, the, what kind of wine is good for your heart? The red wine. Why not white wine? Why not vodka? Why not beer? rhetorical question. The reason is it's not the wine that's good for you, it's the red that's good for you. It's the antioxidants, paranthocyanidines. The good chemicals are found in the darker colored fruits and vegetables. And that's the thing that's good for your heart. So the wine necessarily isn't good for your heart, it's the paranthocyanidines. So if you really want to get all the benefits without the hangover, eat grapes. Well, there you go, problem solved, okay? <laughs> how easy that was? Okay. So alcohol may not be your best choice, okay? Sugar. Sugar gives you energy, right? It's on TV. It must be true. Because TV never lies, right? Radio, we lie, but TV never lies. <laughs> can't see us. That's right. <laughs> so sugar gets into the system, and there's different types of sugar. So let me break this down for you, and if I lose you, stop me, okay? Glucose is the type of sugar that goes into your cells, and the cells you use as energy. That's okay. If you just took plain old white table sugar, that's 50% glucose and 50% fructose. Fructose is fruit sugar. Okay? When fructose gets into your body, it has to be converted into glucose. And in the process, that happens in your liver, and in the process, your body produces uric acid. Uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. I'm a chiropractor. What do I deal with all day, every day? Dr. Katz, a chiropractor. What do we deal with all day? Pain management. So if patients come to us, and we're giving the best chiropractic care in the world, we hope, and they're eating high fructose corn syrup, fructose converts into uric acid, uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts, you're fighting us. Don't fight us. Work with us. Okay? So fructose, not a good idea. That's not the worst part of fructose. Fructose converts into uric acid. Uric acid prevents you from producing nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a vasodilator. It opens up your blood vessels. Your brain, your sex organs, your arms, your legs, your organs need circulation. And if you're eating a lot of fructose and high fructose corn syrup, you're not producing the right amount of nitric oxide, which is going to affect everything from how your brain works, to how you deal with stress, to how you are, are on your Saturday night date. Everything changes because you're not producing the nitric oxide because of the fructose. And where do we find high fructose corn syrup? Everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. Read any container of just about any processed food, and it's high fructose corn syrup. So I'm going to strongly advise you stay away from sugar. Now, when I say sugar, I mean breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. That's hard. That's everything. Uh-uh. OK? But I'm going to give you a challenge. Here's my, I'll give you a challenge. I was going to give it later. I'll give it to you now. I want you to do everything I say for 30 days. If I'm wrong, so what? I'm wrong. <laughs> I blew it. You ate well for 30 days, saved a couple of bucks, and you go out back to your old diet. If I'm right, which I am, <laughs> you'll say, I get it now. It's not hard. It's easy. It's quicker. It's cheaper than anything you're doing right now. Your energy level will go through the ceiling, and you'll say, now I understand what he's talking about. Again, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So what? You can say, you're wrong. I told you. 30 days ago, I told you, and I'm, you're wrong, and you know what you're talking about. But watch what happens. And from an HR standpoint, watch the productivity skyrocket. So if we're paying somebody X amount of dollars an hour to do their job, and we can get 5% more productivity out of them, 2% more productivity out of them, imagine we take a company as big as Cox Media, and everybody puts in 2% more, 1% more. God, 
going to be crazy. Your job's going to be so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just at work. What about at home? What about with your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your kids, your church, your dog? Everything changes when that productivity goes up because you're saving money, feeling better, and living longer. I don't see a downside to this, except the bad stuff tastes good. <laughs> that we know, okay? But after a few days, after actually three or four days, you, you'll, you'll reboot yourself and you'll say, I can do this. It's not hard, okay? So sugar is bad. Now, the only thing worse than sugar is artificial sweetener. That's the worst of the worst. Yes, of all the seven things I'm gonna teach you about, the worst thing you can put in your body is artificial sweetener. I'd rather me, watch you have a cheesesteak sandwich with white bread and a beer. That's how bad it is. Then have artificial sweetener. Okay, so I want to. Here it is. Okay. I have a question. Go ahead. So, what is with all of these new sweeteners that are coming out that's supposed to be um, better for you? Um, the Truvias, the Stevias. The Stevia is fine. All those. Stevia is fine. Brown sugar is just plain all white sugar and it leaves some molasses in there, so it's really not any. It has a little higher calcium, a little higher calcium and iron, but other than that, it's it's junk. Yeah. Okay. Sugar in the raw, it's a little less processed, but it's still 50% fructose, 50% glucose. The fructose has to be converted into glucose, the uric acid, the nitric oxide, and everything else. How about but you leave sweetener in your sugar, in your coffee? Stevia. Stevia. You don't Stevia. Like oh, you don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to negotiate with the coffee on you, though. Okay. Honey is still a lot of fructose. Here's the thing with honey, though. If you're going to do honey, it needs to be locally grown organic. Because if it's not, if it's shipped in from other countries, many times what they do is they take the bees and feed them high fructose corn syrup. And then they mix it with their saliva, spit it out, and that's, that's where they get the honey. Or it's just high fructose corn syrup with some coloring in it. And they call it honey. Yeah. What about agave? Agave. That's a good point. High fructose corn syrup is 55% fructose and 45% glucose. Remember, fructose is the bad one. So agave comes out a couple of years ago, and it's the greatest thing in the world because agave doesn't spike your blood sugar, and it's wonderful, and I, I bought into it too. I thought, this is awesome. And then as a scientist and a chemist, I said, why doesn't it spike your blood sugar? So I did some research. And the reason is agave, remember, for high fructose corn syrup, 55% fructose. Agave, 85% fructose way worse than high fructose corn syrup because it has to go into the liver to be converted and that's why it doesn't spike your blood sugar it's busy being converted in the liver then it spikes your blood sugar later on oh, I need a pantry clean out yes you do <laughs> Sabrina 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 Cupid came to me the other day she goes all right here's the deal I said well no, I've known Sabrina for years we're good friends she goes I want to hire you to come to my house and clean out my pantry <laughs> I said Sabrina you don't have to pay me first of all second of all just clean out your pantry. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't eat sugar as much, mm -hmm. but I have two children. Yes. And so, like, I, like, if they have pancakes, I make them. We use agave. Like, uh -huh. what do we, I mean, because I, I don't want the chemicals of sure. maple syrup, whatever. Right. If you're going to do maple syrup, they used to have a thing called grade B maple syrup. They stopped doing that. I don't know why. But it has to be just an organic maple syrup. You're still loading them up with sugar, though. So, is there anything that, that is okay for them or no? No, kids can't eat ever. <laughs> they can never eat. No, no. <laughs> oh, sure. We're gonna get all. We're gonna cover all that at the end of what to eat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I do want to discuss what happens with when artificial sweetener gets in your body. This is aspartame. Okay, little blue packet. Aspartame is made of three components: aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Again, don't worry about the chemistry. Aspartic acid, when it gets into your body, is an excitotoxin. It causes the brain to fire faster than it's supposed to and literally burns out your brain cells. It fries your brain. And when that happens, the brain gets excited. The brain then wants more glucose to run better, so it makes you hungry. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Phenylalanine, if you have a condition called phenylketonuria, can kill you, because phenylalanine is an amino acid. It has to be processed in your kidneys. But then methyl esters is methanol. Methanol is wood alcohol. Wood alcohol is a highly toxic poison. If you're going to buy wood alcohol, it has a skull and crossbones on it. Do not consume. And yet this converts into wood alcohol. And methanol attacks especially the optic nerve. So a lot of people that do artificial sweeteners start to have vision problems. They're losing their vision. And if you fly in high altitudes, it causes tunnel vision, so you can't see out the sides. 
And I used to travel with a lady who's one of the big people, anti-aspartame people. We used to do seminars all around the country, big conventions. We were always the keynote speakers. And she would walk into the cockpit and look at the pilots. Are you drinking artificial sweetener? <laughs> I mean, and if they were, she wouldn't get on a flight. That's how serious she was about this, because she was afraid they'd get tunnel vision. That's how wild it is. Okay. But this is artificial sweetener. Now, when it gets into the body, it affects the nervous system. Remember, we said the nervous system controls anything, everything. Can I borrow you? Come on up here, because I know you, Shady. <laughs> I know you. Come on. I, I know everybody else here, but I know you better. So, All right. So I'm going to show you what happens when, aspart when aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters get into the body. Okay? So stand here. You're on camera, so make sure. Okay, be, be nice. It flies up. Okay, you're close. Okay, good. Cool. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Put your arm straight out. Just one. You look silly. Okay. All right. <laughs> Pu push up toward the sky. Push up hard. Okay. Nice and strong. Push again. Wow. Holy cow. Oh, man. I'm going to mess with you, man. I'm going to think about beating you up, and I'm not. All right. Put your hand out. Use the other one. So I'm just, okay. I'm just going to dump this in there. Okay. Nothing. No magic trick here. Close your hand. So what I'm doing now with Shaney is I'm having him just hold it. The reason is your skin is a sponge. Anything that comes in contact with your skin is going to get absorbed which is a whole nother lecture, two or three hours I can give you on things like makeup, hairspray, cologne, things, deodorants that come in contact with your body are immediately getting absorbed into your system. Including wood, wood, alcohol. Including wood alcohol. There you go, right. Okay, aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Now remember, aspartic acid is an excitotoxin. It causes the brain to fire faster than it's supposed to and burns out the brain cells, right? So I'm talking for a few seconds. I'm letting it get absorbed. So it's being, <laughs> being absorbed into his body. Now what's it been, 30 seconds maybe? Watch what it does to the nervous system. Put your arm straight out. Push up real hard. Oh my God. Push again. Okay, for the keys to Ernie's car, ready? Okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Push up real hard. Son of a gun. Isn't that freaky? Yeah. Go throw that away somewhere before you get sick. How long is this going to last? Go drink some water and flush it out. Go drink some water and flush it out. Your hold is warm. Yeah, right. <laughs> He didn't even eat it, exactly. He held it in his grubby little hand. <laughs> his callous laden hand. That's how quickly the aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters get into the brain and fry the brain. Wow. So imagine he's going to produce my show, and he is my talent coordinator. So he's going to produce my show one day, and he has a couple of diet sodas beforehand. Worse. What if I have a couple of diet sodas before I go on the air? Okay, if you listen to my show, we're live and we take calls constantly. And I don't have any, I don't have notes in front of me. I don't have, I don't even have a crew, I'm by myself. I, you know, other people have people looking things up and saying, it's this answer, you know, and then you whisper in our ear. I'm by myself. And people say, how do you do that? How does your brain work at that speed? My brain isn't better than yours, my brain just isn't poisoned. That's the only difference. Okay, it's not that I have some super genius brain, I just don't poison it. And at 56 years old, my brain still works pretty good. Yes? So could, and, and I thought it was age that's probably eating mm -hmm. with my brain cells, sure. but could it be the fact that um, when I put sugar in my coffee or creamer or something like that, oh. I don't drink that much coffee, but mm -hmm. when I do, mm -hmm. perhaps it was the last 10 years I have had sure. more coffee uh -huh. or um, any kind of alcohol, uh -huh. like soda, so. Yeah. But I do now serve on my pancakes or waffles mm -hmm. or things like mm -hmm. that. Could that have contributed, say, over 10 years to have done, been doing the same thing and gradually just eating away at my brain cells? If it happened in 30 seconds, yeah. the answer is yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You said stevia was okay. Stevia is okay. Stevia is a sweetener, 300 times sweeter than sugar, zero calories. And what it does, just like all the other artificial sweeteners, but stevia is not artificial, it, t it stimulates the taste buds, the sweet taste buds in your tongue, sends a message to the brain, says, yes, that's sweet. Oh, I like it. However, when it gets into the small intestine, it's not absorbed. And so that's why it's zero calories. That's why it tastes sweet but doesn't have any reaction. Now, we used to say that these artificial sweeteners have zero calories and aren't being absorbed. Turns out we're wrong. The new research is showing that some of this is being absorbed and it's causing a lot of serious neurological issues. Okay? So, and they make that from E. coli, by the way. It's a, it's a waste product of bacteria like E. coli, yeah. Something to think about. In fact, I remember giving a lecture one time down in, uh, was it Savannah, Augusta, wherever they had the big aspartame plant. And I spoke to a bunch of people at work there, and they said, we have to wear gas masks every day, because if we don't, we'll die. 
and they have pumps, the same uh, coating that they put on the, the, the shields of the spaceships as they come back into Earth, it can survive re-entry into the atmosphere, and it can't survive more than about a month or two of aspartame attacking it. Why they have to have change to it. It doesn't kill you right away. I mean, so it's okay, you know? So, and again, it's your choice. Whatever you decide to do is up to you. I can't make you do things. My job, when I'm on the air and when I'm here as your coworker, is I want to give you the knowledge. Whatever you decide to do with the knowledge is totally up to you. So when you see me in the halls, don't have to hide your food. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Happens all the time. People are like, oh, it's not a joke. Crap. You know? <laughs> Warning. Mm -hmm. Okay, warning. Why that doesn't have a warning? It will. Uh, yes, all in time. Do you know okay. people die from it? Or oh, yeah. It? Well, people die all the time from it, but a lot of times it's not the direct cause. Right. Yeah. It has to be excessive. I've been lecturing on biochemistry and nutrition at the collegiate level, at the postgraduate level, on corporate level, on radio for 35 years. And I predict things, and I'm always right. I remember years ago saying that uh, hydrogenated oil is going to be the number one cause of heart disease, I promise you. Well, a couple of years later, CNN has a report, margarine, the number one cause of heart disease, which is made with hydrogenated oil. And my mother called me up, and she said, did you see the report on CNN? And I said, yes. Yeah. She goes, I'm not sure if you're a nut or a prophet. I haven't quite <laughs> figured it out yet. <laughs> it's a little bit of both, probably. But yeah, I mean, the we know we, the science is there. It just has to get mainstream. And that's what makes things like my show so popular, because we're doing things before it's mainstream. And the people hear it and go, oh, Dr. Joe was right. Oh, he's right about that too. So I, everything I say is research. It's not like I'm making this stuff up. It's all well researched. It just hasn't made mainstream media yet. So we're kind of cutting edge on mainstream media here. So, so artificial sweetener, bad stuff. Okay? If you use a little yellow packet, that's sucralose. Sucralose is an a, is a estrogen stimulant. It stimulates your estrogen receptor sites, causing the body to act as if it has too much estrogen. Estrogen causes abnormal cell growth, which is called what? Cancer. Cancer. So there's a lot of cancers that are estrogen sensitive, especially to different types of breast cancer. So when you're doing that, you're stimulating estrogen receptor sites, and we don't want that. And if you're not growing this way, you're growing this way, exactly. Okay. And when, it come, when I do my, uh, once a year I do, a, 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 the only show I ever repeat, in all the years I've been on radio, the only show I ever repeat is the Food Sex Connection. Right around Valentine's Day I do the Food Sex Connection, how food affects your sex life. And I repeat it, and we talk a lot about how estrogen counteracts testosterone, and testosterone is not only your sex drive hormone, it builds muscle. But not just biceps and triceps. How about your heart? How about your blood vessels? How about your colon? Those are all muscles too. So if you're putting chemicals in your body that are lowering your testosterone levels, it's not only about the sex function, it's about your life. Okay, and so that's why I'm big on keeping the testosterone levels high and keeping the estrogen levels low in men and women. I mean, relatively high and low, okay? So we gotta be careful with the artificial sweetener. So again, stevia, okay. Not bad, right? So we did alcohol, we did sugar, we did artificial sweetener. Should we do coffee or should we skip coffee? <laughs> skip coffee. <laughs> you wanna do coffee? All right, if you're gonna do coffee, I'll negotiate with you. Coffee is one of the most highly sprayed foods there is as far as chemicals go. So, la, 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 la. So, <laughs> I'm gonna give you an alternative, don't worry, okay? You're gonna, like, you're gonna like me at the end here. I'm gonna be a good boy here, okay? That's right. <laughs> so, coffee is sprayed with a lot of chemicals. A lot of them are estrogen-like compounds called xenoestrogens. Xeno meaning foreign. Xenophobia, fear of foreigners. Xenoestrogen, foreign estrogens. And when it gets into the body, they can be three to 600 times stronger than human estrogen. And the reason we spray it on the bugs is because one of two things will happen with bugs. We kill them right out or we sterilize them so they can't make bug babies. <laughs> and we do that by giving them lots of estrogen. Okay, so we're spraying estrogen on the bugs, and so the bugs now can't reproduce, and then we wipe out the bug population. Well, if you're drinking the coffee, you're, or you're eating the, the bug spray. Not a good idea. So coffee is also an acid. When you put acid in your body, your body has to neutralize the acid, and the body uses calcium as its primary neutralizing agent. So acid gets into the body, the body takes calcium out of the bones and the blood and neutralizes the acid so that the acid doesn't eat holes in your blood vessels and kill you. So you're sucking calcium out of your body every time you put acids in your body. What are acid foods? The seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Coffee being an acid, 
so you have to neutralize the acid, and it's loaded with toxic chemicals. So I'm going to give you an alternative. I'll let you drink coffee if you drink organic coffee. Okay. Cut a deal with me? OK, that's fair, right? OK, now in my office, you know, we have six doctors, we have a bunch of employees, and some of them drink coffee. I'm okay with that. But I only say, listen, I'll buy the coffee, but it has to be organic, or else you buy your own coffee. So, like, for example, in Starbucks, they say organic, preserved. Knock yourself out. Okay, now it's still an acid, and it's still robbing the body of calcium, but I'm negotiating with you. A little you. less. A little less. Okay, and. They what? Estrogen chemicals, right. The estrogen is less. Now, if you do decaffeinated, we're taking some of the caffeine out, so that's a little less acid, too. So that's better still. So organic decaffeinated, better still. See? See, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll cut you a okay. deal. Some people say that because it's more processed, it's bad for you, and, and when they do the decaf, it's... Well, many times they'll decaffeinate with turpentine and formaldehyde. Okay. That's how they determine. But if it's organic, they can't use turpentine and formaldehyde. Right. Some giving you a double, double whammy on that one. OK? Yes? So when it comes to coffee and you know, the chemicals that they use to preserve it, what about tea? Right? They have tea is OK. However, it is good and it's better. OK? So if you're going to do tea, OK, organic is the best. OK? And the tea bags, if they're white, many times they use bleach to make them white. So you don't want bleach in your body. But, but it's still better than coffee. Take the bleach. There you go. Right. Bleach is better than coffee because it's such a small amount. Yes, it's a chlorine. It's, I mean, it's chlorine in your water. It's chlorine bleach. But here's the deal. If you go from coffee to tea, you might not have enough caffeine and you lose your mind. There's something in the middle called mate. Okay, mate has a chemical called matein, which is similar to caffeine. And, it, and you want to know how caffeine works? Anybody care? Yeah. Oh, well, you know me, I'll tell you. We could be here all day, you know. <laughs> 1.30, I know, hurry up, hurry up. So, all right, so here's the deal. In your brain, you have a chemical that's released called adenosine. Adenosine is released and it's absorbed by something called adenosine receptor sites. So adenosine is released, it's absorbed by adenosine receptor sites, and you get tired. That's how your body gets tired. Well, what happens is caffeine looks like adenosine, chemically. And it gets into the body and blocks up your adenosine receptor sites so you can't absorb adenosine so you don't get tired. Follow that? Yes. But I was asked to get tired when I drink coffee. Yeah, well, what happened is you probably blocked up so many of your adenosine, or you created more adenosine receptor sites. Uh -huh. So the body adapts to itself and says, I need more adenosine receptor sites. And that's why one cup of coffee used to block up all your adenosine receptor sites, and then the body says, I need to make more sites. So they need two cups, and three cups, and five cups, and six cups. Um, Follow all that? I guess I'm on the road to the <laughs> <laughs> Highway to hell, all right? There's a song they wrote about you. <laughs> Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> right. Right. Sure. Okay. Okay. Sure. And that's why, because I look at the oil that comes to the top of the coffee. Sure. And sit, that oil. Whatever's in that oil, I wish they could put it in this oil. Well, how about I give you an alternative? Mm -hmm. I have answers. <laughs> Take some organic coconut oil. I do. Oil pulling, you do it for about 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay, that didn't do it? Really? Gosh, that always, almost always solves the problem. Uh, well, I'll negotiate with you then. Okay. Do, 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 do organic then. Fair enough? Okay, organic coffee. Organic coffee. Okay, that's fair enough, right? Okay. okay. See, I'm, I'm, see, I'll give you alternatives to everything. Okay? I gave you alcohol, three glasses of water. I gave you artificial sweetener and stevia, sugar and stevia. I'll give you organic coffee. So, again, I'm, I'm a realist. I know you're not going to be crazy yet. But in time, it's, it's baby steps, okay? So, all right, so we did coffee. So we got to do uh, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda. Okay, let's do meat, let's, let's do meat and dairy, okay? And, and soda kind of fits in with the sugar and the artificial sweetener, okay? If you're going to do soda, nine teaspoons of sugar in a can of soda. 
nine packages of sugar in one can of soda. And a lot of that sugar is high fructose corn syrup. Plus, it's made with genetically modified corn, which is another hour lecture. I won't give you that one, OK? But nine, pa nine packages of sugar in one can of soda. So here's my negotiation with you, OK? They now have soda sweetened with stevia. <gasps> Problem solved. Coke life is half sugar, half stevia, OK? Years ago, I'll tell you a little story. Coca-Cola called me up and hired me, because a lot of companies hire me as a speaker, and they pay me a lot of money to come in and do this, and their employees go, oh my god, this is great, and they see the productivity, HR comes back to me and says, oh my gosh, it's amazing, whatever you did, everybody's happy, let's keep doing this. So I, I, so I get a phone call from a company called Coca-Cola one day, and they come to me and they say, it's the HR director, and they say, we want you to come speak to our people because you're the number one wellness uh, motivational speaker in the world. And I didn't know I had that title until they gave it to me, I'll take it. And uh, they said, you're the number one health and wellness speaker in the world, and we want you to come speak to our people. And I said, do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> you're sure you want me? <laughs> and I met with a lady, and she was very nice. And she says, no. She says, we understand you don't, we have slight dif differences here, but that's OK. We want you to come in and talk to us. I said, OK. So I went down there, and I said, I'd like to meet with your research and development company. Now, this is 20 years ago. And she said, sure. So I got there early. I went down here in Atlanta, and I met with the HR directors, and I met with the, the, the uh, R&D. And I was ready to go nuts. I had all my research on stevia and how safe it is and why you're not using stevia, blah, blah, blah. And I walked in, and I said, have you ever heard of stevia? And they said, well, of course we have. And I said, why are you not using stevia? They said, there's not enough of it in the world to meet our needs. Give us a few years. You know who owns Truvia and Purvia? Coke and Pepsi. <laughs> so once again, 20 years ago, I was all ready to go to battle, man, and they said, give us time. So they were already planning that years ago. And they own Coke and Pepsi, owns, I don't know if it's Truvia or Purevia, who owns what, okay? So I was right, okay? And you're, a lot of countries use stevia in their artificial sweeteners because aspartame is banned in a lot of countries, okay? And genetically modified food is banned, so you can't use high fructose corn syrup because it's made with genetically modified corn, so it's banned. So these companies have to be smart enough to get ahead of the curve. If you're going to ban artificial sweetener, what can we use? We'll use stevia. So you will see, Dr. Joe prediction, in the next 10 years, stevia sweetened Coke and Pepsi and other brand names. I predict it. And I will be right. Okay? Okay? Because I'm not wrong about stuff. So it's already in the makings. It's not like I predicted this. I'm kind of fudging on this. It's already in the makings. That's why you're seeing Coke light, half sugar, half stevia. Got to get the American palate used to this now. So just be cool. A quick stevia question is, is there a difference between what's in a packet and what's in that little jar with a tiny spoon? Yes. Do you suggest we stick with the jar and the tiny spoon? Yes. The reason is many times they'll cut the stevia with something called maltodextrin. And maltodextrin oftentimes is made with genetically modified corn. So hopefully you're going to get a pure stevia. Now, pure stevia is about three to 600 times sweeter than real sugar. So if you get pure stevia, and I can, you can get it at a health food store, a fingernail full of sweet in a glass of water. That's how powerful pure stevia is. That's the kind I use, OK? Um, so if it's cut, try to do organic if you can. They can't use genetically modified foods then. And it, the, the brand names are not, they're not organic. Could you use it for baking? I mean, you can use it for baking, yep. Use much less amount, and now they have some of it that's already cut, so to speak, so that it, you can use it cup for cup. Um, and many times you may have to add something to it, like applesauce or something, just to create bulk, because a cup of sugar has so much bulk. Oh, right. So what do you replace that with? Maybe a cup of applesauce or something like that. So if you look it up, there's ingredients, there's recipes for it. Yeah. OK? Now you would stop talking about uh, margarine, margarines uh -huh. having hydrogenated oil. Yes. Instead of, um, is there a butter that's better? Is it just the regular, like, brick butter, or? If you're going to do butter, let's do dairy now, because I know we only have about 18 minutes here. Uh, if you're going to do dairy products, I'm not a big fan of dairy. I've been a vegan for over 30 years. I'm not asking you to be a vegan. But I am living the lifestyle, and it works, OK? Every time I get my test done, I had the, uh, the full body scan they advertised with us. Um, they did my scan. They looked at me. They said, how old are you? I was at the time I was 55. And they said, uh, they said, you have zero plaque. There is nothing on this test. It's 100% clear. This is incredible. We've never, we hardly ever see this. What are you doing? 
And I said, I'm doing what I say I do. They said, it's working, don't stop. And I hear that, Dr. Cat hears it too a lot. Patients will come to see us, and all of a sudden these miracle cures will happen, and they'll go back to their other doctors, whatever the condition is, and the doctor will say, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it, because you're better, you're healing. When before it was a terminal condition, whatever it is, and now they're starting to heal. So that's kind of cool. So it, it does work. All right, so dairy products. Cow's milk is made for baby cows. No babies or cows in the audience today? Okay. 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 <laughs> and the protein content is different than human milk. The fat content is different. And even the sugar content is different. Okay, the protein in milk is called casein. Now there's human casein, there's dog casein, there's cat casein, there's cow casein. We don't have the enzyme called renin to break down the casein as an adult. Babies produce it because they're designed by nature to breastfeed, but then they weaned off the breast, any animal, and we're done. We're the only animals that drink the milk of another mammal. <laughs> Ain't that weird? Who's the first person to drink milk? Guy strung out on aspartame one day, he's out in the field, <laughs> he's a cow. <laughs> I'm gonna grab this. <laughs> Whatever comes out, I'm gonna put it on my Cheerios. And, uh, <laughs> bizarre, right? <laughs> so it's not, we're not designed to drink any milk, even human milk, after a, a baby, especially cow's milk, which is a totally different thing. Baby cows are born 200 pounds, I don't know, big, right? And they get bigger. Well, if we're drinking the milk that they're supposed to drink to get that big, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> it works. <laughs> and the milk we drank 20, 30, 40 years ago is different than the milk now because cows used to eat grass, and now they eat corn and soybeans, which are genetically modified and sprayed with megatons of pesticides and hormone-disrupting chemicals. So the cows are eating, it's coming up in the milk, and then you're eating the milk or eating the meat, I'm gonna get the meat too, it settles into fat and you're eating this, and so all these toxic chemicals in a super high concentrated level are getting into your body, and your body can't handle it. And that's why we're seeing so many diseases skyrocket. When I first got into practice, we didn't see, you know, it's chiropractic, back pain, neck pain, car accidents, that's what we saw. Now, every day, Dr. Cat will tell you, we have people coming in with cancer and kidney failure and, and diabetes and, and liver congestion and high cholesterol. We're seeing probably half, half of our patients are now disease conditions and half of them are back cases. So it's really wild that it didn't happen 20, 30 years ago and now it is. And so that's what's happening is something is different. Everybody look at kids. You, you know, do I need to go into that, right? <laughs> they don't look like 11-year-olds anymore, do they? No. no, something for boys and girls. It's not just the girls, it's the boys too. And you're looking at them going, you know, wow. And something's different. And every year, every generation before 1980, girls were reaching puberty. Every generation was, I think, 10 months earlier. Now it's years earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're putting all these estrogen-like compounds in the body, speeding up the whole maturation. What happens when we expand this out 20 and 30 and 40 years. They're speeding up their, their life expectancy. And I predict, I hope I'm wrong on this one, that you're gonna see life expectancy drop. And in fact, this generation of children is the first generation ever to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents. Wow. By five years. So if you have a kid today, they can expect to live five years less than you. With all the modern technology and all the brilliant things we have, MRIs and CAT scans and laser technology and laser surgeries, kids are living less. So we lost the battle, didn't we? Yeah. Well, what would I give my two-year-old instead of milk? Well, you can give them soy milk, almond milk. I, soy milk is better than cow's milk, but almond milk, cashew milk, coconut milk. Now again, you don't have to give them milk. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing too, is we keep thinking, I gotta give the kid milk. I haven't had milk in 30 years. Okay, so you don't have to give them milk. Don't, don't worry about that. But if you want to give them something, coconut milk, almond milk, that's all great. But as the eschema is evolving, like uh -huh. wouldn't evolution make the body adapt to the new condition? Mm -hmm. It will. So. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> evolution doesn't happen in one generation, and that's the problem. Because for generations, it was a very slow process. Things changed. We got taller. We got smarter. Our brains got bigger. Now, all of a sudden, in the past 30 years, Interesting thought. I would think that perhaps for generations to come, you're right. But what about me <laughs> today and your kids today? 
So, but also I think, and, and I, I joke about this when I, when I teach, talk to t uh, schools, you don't have to be smart as a kid anymore. You just not have to be dumb. Does that make sense? Because we're dumbing down our kids. We never got bags of high fructose corn syrup candy because it didn't exist. Now it does. And the corn, we, our cows were fed uh, grass, and now they're fed corn and soy, which raises the omega-6 fatty acids. And omega-6 fatty acids cause inflammation, and inflammation causes pain, brain malfunction, obesity. Okay, 50% of Amer Americans in the next couple of years are gonna be diabetic or pre-diabetic. 50%, something's wrong. Well, if you're going to do cheese, and I'll give you the, I'm going to negotiate. She's the big negotiator here. <laughs> I'll give you this if you give me that. It's like the mafia, you know? I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Okay. <laughs> I understand. Right. Okay. So if you're going to do animal products, dairy or meat, butter, cheese, yogurt, eggs, ice cream, I'm going to recommend again, organic only or don't eat them. Fair, okay? Couple of things is when you're out, there's not a lot of organic yeah. to buy out, and so you, then you can avoid it. When you're home, you'll switch to organic. But here's what's gonna happen, because it happens all the time. You're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna see what it's like for 30 days. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. And you're gonna do it, and you're gonna go, oh, that's it? I can do that. And then you'll say, wait a minute, you know what? I'm going to the bathroom better. My love life's improving. My sinuses are clearing up. I'm sleeping better. My phlegm is gone. My sore throat. I always get a cold when autumn comes around. I didn't get a cold this year. Oh, he's right. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Like I said, so what? I'm wrong. Try it and say. Give me a shot. But okay. it's, so it's very, I've done this before and I agree. I 100% whatever. It's the kid thing that's so yeah. It is a kid thing, yes. Because they, I mean, as it is, we don't keep all, a lot of, nothing is, in a box, all that kind of I understand. Stuff. But my kids don't want to just eat vegetables. I understand. I have a 12 year old. I so, totally understand. I'm a single dad. I have a 12 year old. When she's with me, we eat very well. Yeah. When she's not with me, she doesn't. Okay. <laughs> 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 my kids will stop, like, literally, like they, and they're very athletic, so I uh -huh. gotta get food in them. I understand. Sure. Uh, there's plenty. What I, do with, what I did with my daughter, I said, okay, what will you eat? Let's make a list. I made a list. And that list is like three pages long. I never thought it was going to be that long. She likes Mexican food. She loves Moe's. Yeah. Okay, you want to go to Moe's? We'll get a burrito, but we'll get it without the wrap. Can we do that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Again, even with kids, I could do that. That's okay. You like guacamole? Yeah, let's get double guacamole today then because it's the omega-3 fatty acids in the avocados and the potassium and magnesium. Oh, I could do that. Okay, and then you slowly start getting, just making small changes in their lives. I, look, that, that's not a bad idea. You like soup? Yo, I don't like soup. Okay, what kind of soup do you like? Well, I like tomato soup. Right, let's do tomato soup then. How about that? Good, okay. And then I'll negotiate with her. If she wants to have cheese, I'll say, I'll give you organic cheese. Okay, so she went to organic cheese, and in my house, I don't have organic cheese. Uh, I do have for her, but I have, I have the plant-based cheeses. I said, you want some of this today? She goes, yeah, I'll have that. And then slowly, they go, oh, it's okay, because right now, it's, all, it's the same fear that you have, they have. It don't taste good. I can't do this. And there's going to be some things that they're not going to like. But you know what? There's going to be some things you don't like. So what? Don't eat it. There's 120,000 foods that you can eat. There's seven I want you to avoid. Wow. <laughs> the problem is, is they're in everything, everything. That kids want to get. Yes. Especially, like, it's one thing for sure. an adult who can, it's just. Mm -hmm. I understand. And when she's at school, I can't change that. When she's with her friends, I can't change that. When she's with her mother, I can't change that. But when she's with me, I have the decisions to make. And I give her something called Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Those are supplements that I've created. And I talk about them a lot on the air. And they are unbelievably popular. We ran out this week. You would have thought we killed a baby. <laughs> oh, my God. People coming in. Where's the Super Greens? Where's the, oh, the Essential Source? Where's the Essential Source? I said, they're coming in Thursday. I promise. <laughs> what do you mean we don't have them? Like, Man, you know, God. <laughs> But once you start giving the body the nutrients that it requires, mm -hmm. everything changes. I promise you. Go ahead. Okay, I have a question. I mean, he started eating the veggies and that kind of stuff. So what happens if it's not organic? It's going to affect? It's okay. It's better. Again, it's all about better choices. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you have a salad that's not organic, okay. Better than having a burger. Okay? On that note, if uh -huh. I have a burger. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of. Sure. I've gotten to where I'm Perfect. Good. Without okay, good choice. And um, is it better? Because it sounds easy to tell me. 
I understand. Mm -hmm. So, um, if I want a hamburger, uh -huh. should, do, is it better just to get the, the lean, you know, the extra lean, uh, make sure I get the extra lean, or does it actually have to be grass fed? I prefer it's grass fed. Okay. Okay. But again, whatever you decide to do is up to you. Right. But try, and I understand that the grass-fed tastes better. I don't know that because I don't eat meat, but I understand that it tastes better. Okay. So once you try it, I'm you'll go, try it. oh, I could do this. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. try it. Okay. We have a grass-fed restaurant in my Perfect. city, so I don't want to go. Excellent. There you go. Uh, I have a autoimmune disease, so there's a lot of things that don't feel. Uh-huh. Um, but I do want to ask you this. How do you know if it's truly organic? Well, I've seen on television, yeah. they're saying people saying it's organic, but it's not. Right. If it says organic, it's a good chance it's organic, especially if it's made in the United States, because we have pretty strict rules about that. If it's not organic, we know it's not organic. But if it says organic, at least we've got a shot at being organic. Make sense? If it, if, it, if it says it's organic, if she looks on the back and it says something like fructose corn syrup, then you know it, that it's It wouldn't really be organic, not. right, yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. But it's all about better choices. It's not about, you're not going to do everything today. I get that. One hour is not going to blow away your money. Well, Dr. Joe was right. I'm going to do this forever. <laughs> <laughs> but take a little step. You know, instead of giving the kids soda, try, you know, listen, all we have is water today. Or we have, my daughter loves seltzer. Okay, I'll give you a can of seltzer today. Oh, I can do that. You know, and just take these little steps and watch what happens. It's so easy, I promise you. Tens of thousands of people have done it. Well, why pasta? What is wrong with pasta? Yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, it's a, it's a wheat, okay? And one of the problems we have... How about egg noodles? Okay, if you're going to do eggs, it's got to be organic. Okay? Egg noodles. Egg noodles. Egg noodles. Well, it's made with eggs, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. He's saying no. It's got to be organic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He's trying to negotiate. Yeah, right. If you're going to do eggs, they have to be organic. So you can get organic but egg you're noodles. Not recommending eggs. I'm not recommending eggs. But if you do them, <laughs> organic, okay? But here's the thing with wheat. When we were kids, wheat would grow about amber waves of grain. Remember that? Yeah. Well, what we've learned as scientists is we can genetically, not genetically modify, but hybridize wheat to make it shorter, less stalk, more wheat because the energy has to go somewhere, okay? So we've made wheat this big now as opposed to this big, and we have a lot more wheat. And it's much higher in something called gluten, okay? And gluten is one of the things called lectins that is in wheat, and when lectins get into your bowels, they irritate the bowels and cause an inflammatory reaction. The other thing more recently, very recently, is farmers started to realize that if we spray glyphosate, weed killer, on the wheat, it kills the wheat and it's easier to harvest. Follow that? Yeah. So we're spraying all this weed killer on the wheat to kill it, to harvest it. Guess where that weed killer goes? In your body. So a lot of people now have these gluten intolerances that we didn't hear about 20 years ago. Yeah. It may not be a gluten intolerance. It might so be. weed killer intolerance. Weed killer intolerance. Glycophosphate. <laughs> That's it. Is in honey nut cherry. Yes, isn't that amazing? Cut that out of my kid's cereal in the morning. Uh-huh. Well, I'll make her oatmeal in the morning. I'll make her super greens, an essential source, and I'll throw a frozen banana in there. Um, but oatmeal's fine, okay? Uh, if you're going to do eggs, organic eggs, that's fine. Well, how about with regular eggs? Regular eggs, the, the, what the chickens are fed. Yeah. Okay. Um, two of the well, three. Well, well, two of the three major, uh, it's not so much the egg itself, it's what's in the egg. Mm -hmm. Two of the three major food companies now put arsenic in the food that they feed the chicken. And so the arsenic gets into the chicken, and then you get the arsenic into your body, and then the chickens poop, and they take that, and they, they put it on things like non-organic rice. They fertilize the rice with it, and the rice arsenic goes up. So, again, we got to go back to the old days is really what it is. We just got to go back to the old school. I think on the rice arsenic. All rice has arsenic. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I didn't say no rice. A little bit of arsenic your body can handle. But if you're using non-organic rice, they're using chicken poop many times to fertilize the rice, which is the arsenic in it, okay? Well, organic rice has arsenic in it, too? It just absorbs it from the soil, okay? It just, it's not, it's in nature, yeah. Uh-huh, yes, exactly, right, okay? So. Is quinoa better? Quinoa's a much better choice, absolutely, yeah. Lower in carbs, too, that's the whole thing, is we gotta cut the sugars out of our body, and that's a biggie, too, okay? More questions? Okay, back to the alcohol. I have to almost because I'm out of time. But again, same thing with meat, same thing with dairy. And, and if you're going to eat meat, I recommend organic only. Um, if you can do it, okay? And there's going to be times when you're not going to do it, but this is what I want you to do. I want you to do what I say, and then I want you to cheat. And then 
She's so happy. <laughs> so I want you to cheat and see how you feel. And I promise you, you're going to say, Dr. Joe was right. My God, I ate, I ate fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. I felt great. I ate food like we have laid out here today, and I felt great. And then I had pizza <laughs> with the dairy products and the wheat and the high gluten. And man, I was so. Okay? Yeah, okay. And then you're so tired. And you're going to say, why am I so tired today? Oh, now I need coffee with artificial sweetener. <laughs> and you go right back into the seven deadly sins because all those are stimulating. And you're going to go, wow, I felt so much better when I did this. Is it as much fun? No, it's not. You're going to be happier? If you gave up just dairy products, eight years added to your life on average. If you go to a plant-based diet, 11 years. So if I had a pill and I was going to sell it to you, and I was going to say, I'm going to give you this pill, it's going to add 11 quality years to your life. Tell me how much you'd pay for it. As much as you had. <laughs> right? Yeah. I want 11 quality yeah. years, I'll pay whatever you give me. <laughs> I'm giving it to you for free. What about fish? If you're going to eat fish, it's got to be wild caught. Yes. Okay? Because the other ones are farm raised and they feed them to steroids and hormones and chemicals and pesticides and herbicides and genetically modified yeah. corn and soy and everything else. So. Yes, because I've, I've seen, like, they, they had a, a story on. I think it was like one of the 2020s or something like that, where they were talking about how um, on the back package of the fish like you get from Walmart mm -hmm. or anywhere, it has, um, what's the stuff that you put in your car? Um, Antifreeze? No. Propylene no, glycol? Uh, There's money, uh, money. Uh, I don't know. It's bad. It's, it's, bad. it's bad. But anyway, it's, it, they use it to put um, the coloring. To make the, to keep the color. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Fish. yeah genetically, so now yeah. You need to just, if you look at the package, make sure it just says fish. Fish, yeah. Because yeah, farm-raised salmon is gray. Yeah. And they have to add pink dye to it. So that's why if you go to a place where they where they use the fake dye, it's bright pink. Yeah. And you think, oh, it looks so fresh. No, that's dye they added to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bummer. Okay. But it's just like a wax on the fruit. The wax on right, the fruit, yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And with apples, for example, what we'll usually do is we'll spray the apples and then we'll dip them in wax. Well, you sealed in all the pesticides. And a fun thing you can do is grab an apple, take some hot, boiling hot water and just pour it over the apple and you watch all the wax melt off it. Come off. It will come off. It does come off, right? You know that, yeah. So it's not a secret. So when do you do your fruit before you eat it? I try to do organic fruit, but if, if I'm going to eat the skin, it's organic. That's a good rule I have. So if I'm going to eat apples, I'm gonna, peaches, I'm going to do organic. If it's a banana, if it's an avocado, it's not so important because you're going to peel the skin off. Okay? Still organic's better. It has more nutrients, but again, it's all about making better decisions. It can, yes, unfortunately, because it's really hard to find pure water anymore. And I can give you the rationale behind mercury, but I don't have time. So if I eat fish, like different kind of fish every day, as a, a protein, uh -huh. as a source of protein, it, it will be bad, bad too? Um, if it's, it's wild caught, is a better choice. Okay, you don't eat a lot of protein. That's a whole nother lie. Okay, you don't eat a lot of protein. I worked out this morning. I squatted 1,015 pounds, okay? <laughs> Okay, now I'm 56 years old. How did I do that? I do it because my body, I, don't eat any, I don't eat any major sources of protein. Okay, I do that just because my body has the protein that it needs from the plants. You don't need extra protein. It puts a strain on your kidneys. So. Well, I know, you're kicking me out, aren't you? Well, this, it's time, and I'm sure I, you're willing to hang around. Yeah, okay, real quickly, though, everybody's got a survey, so if you would do me a favor. Uh, if you like this seminar, just write down what you thought of today's workshop so we can show Ernie how much how happy you were so we can come back and do it again, okay? And then also I'm going to give you presents because girls like what? Yes. Gifts. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Nobody said diamonds. First time ever. No woman said diamonds. We're thinking about actually having Dr. Cat come here and actually see patients because okay. we see so many people that work here already and they cut, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. And there's been a big demand for people saying, well, if you just come to the studio, I just don't have time. So I'm going to give everybody a gift certificate. It's good for the first free visit at our office in Marietta. It's a consultation with me or one of my doctors, an examination, and a set of x-rays. It's absolutely free. Okay? I really mean it. No charge. And then uh, we'll see if there's a big enough interest. Then we'll have Dr. Cat come down maybe one or two days a week here. And then if, maybe if we talk nice... Maybe the other buildings, we can do that too. So, you two can talk. <laughs> and... So definitely here, guys, if there's yeah. enough interest. Uh, yeah. Everybody get these? 
No. Okay. Also, everybody, everybody been to R. Thomas? You know where it is right up the street, right? Yeah. Okay. Richard was a good friend of mine. He passed away recently. Yeah. Richard was the president of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Him and the colonel built Kentucky Fried Chicken. Went out on his own and started his own little company called Bojangles. He's the founder of Bojangles. About 30 years ago, realized he was killing people with what he was serving them. Sold the whole chain of Bojangles and opened up this cafe on Peachtree Street. Wow. How, what a great story, right? Love the man. Anyway, I'm going to give everybody two $5 gift certificates to R. Thomas. Okay? And we love R. Thomas, yes. And they got great fruits. And they got great fruits. I would prefer, if you can, if it's going to be wheat, make sure it's organic. If you, uh, but you can do a gluten-free pasta, like a quinoa I pasta. That's a much better choice. Because we've done that. It tastes yeah. good. It tastes fine. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. If you're going to do butter, organic, or there's also things called earth balance, which is a good substitute. Um, there you go. See? Good. Earth balance is a good substitute. You're seeing a lot of them now. Uh, uh, was, I can't believe it's not butter. One of them, anyways, is now coming out with a vegan version of it. Oh, yeah. 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 Because the truth is the truth. I mean, it, it's not a lie. And so people are going in that direction. And companies will go where you spend your dollar. So, more questions? Yes. Um, I started giving my kids water. Good. I filter it. Uh huh. But we add the clay mix. Okay. It's probably dangerous. I would read the ingredients and see. Yeah. Try just adding a little bit of stevia to it and see if they like it. That makes you solve the problem. Well, one more thing. If stevia is uh, affecting the sensors of your mm -hmm. taste, right. would that oversensitize it and then you eventually don't feel that, that break is mm -hmm. sweet anymore? If you do too much stevia, yeah, but you have to do an awful lot of stevia to do that. Yeah. So if you're just using a little bit, it's not going to be that big a deal. No? 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 Get out of here. I think that poison just left my system. <laughs> <laughs>